When you're given the graph of a function and you're asked to compute the definite integral, you can hardly ever find an exact value, but you can estimate. So you can use left sums or right sums or an average of the two to get an estimate. In this example, you want to use left and right sums to get an estimate of the integral from 1 to 9 of f of t dt when you're given the graph of f of t like this. So let's look at this problem. We're going from 1 to 9, so let's draw that on our axis. That's the interval. And now we want to break this up into four subintervals. So 9 minus 1 is 8, and we want to break that up into four different pieces. So we get 8 divided by 4 is 2. So each subinterval should have length 2. 1 to 3, 3 to 5, 5 to 7, and 7 to 9 are be our four subintervals. Okay, so let's look at the first contribution to our Riemann sum. We're using left-hand endpoints. So I go from 1 to 3, I use the left-hand side, which is 1, and I look at the value there, which is 10. So I'm going to use this rectangle to contribute to the Riemann sum. And the area of this rectangle is given by the height times the base. The height is 10, and then the base is 2. The next one is the interval between 3 and 5. And in this case, I use the left-hand endpoint, because I'm using left-hand sums. The height is about 7.5. So this total area is going to be 7.5 times 2. Now, when I come to the next interval, I go from 5 to 7. The left-hand endpoint, the value of the function is actually 0. So in this case, I'm going to have no contribution, 0 times 2. And then for the next one, between 7 and 9, the left-hand endpoint, the value is 10. So I use that value, and I get this rectangle. So the contribution to the Riemann sum is going to be minus 10, because it's below the axis, times 2. Right? I count all areas below the axis negatively. So I can simplify this. I get 20 plus 7.5 times 2 is 15 plus 0 minus 20. The 20s cancel, and I'm left with just 15. So that's an estimate of my definite integral using left-hand sums with four subintervals. We could also do the right-hand sums. So let's do that. So here I'm going to estimate the same integral using right sums. I go from 1 to 9 again. My intervals are 1, 3, 3, 5, 5, 7, and 7, 9, just as before. But this time I'm going to use right endpoints. So for my first rectangle, instead of using 1, I'm going to use the 3. The value at 3 is 7.5. So I get a slightly smaller rectangle in this case. I want to figure out that interval. And the contribution is 7.5, the height, times the base, which is 2. And then I add to that the next. And for the next interval, 3 to 5, the right-hand endpoint, the value is actually 0. So I don't pick up any contribution here. 0 times the base is 2, which will just give me 0. And for the next one, between 5 and 7, this time I do get a contribution because for the right-hand endpoint, the value is minus 10. So this area that I'm going to compute is going to be minus 10, because I'm below the axis, I'm counting everything negatively, times 2, which is going to be minus 20, plus the last interval of 7 to 9. Now the right-hand endpoint gives me a value of 7.5. So 7.5 times 2, but I count this negatively because it's below the x-axis. So let's summarize. So we get value of 15, 7.5 times 2, plus 0. T t minus 10 times 2 is minus 20. Um, 7.5 times 2 is going to be 15. So I'll get minus 15 here. The 15s cancel in this case, and I'm left with a value of minus 20. Okay, so that's the estimate for the right-hand sums. If you want to get a better estimate, what can you do? Well, you can take your right-hand estimate of minus 20, your left-hand estimate of 15, and add them together. So I get 15 
plus minus 20 and divide by 2. Take their average. So I'll get minus 5 divided by 2. And that's equal to minus 2.5. So that's an average of the two. It's a better estimate than either.